Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first episode of I'm Quarantined and I want to do something else but react to music videos. Roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano The Third. Y'all guys are the third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider becoming part of the family, clicking the subscribe button, bottom right hand corner. That's normally what I say, but if you like what you see at the end of this video, that's all well and good, but this is like a, this is a departure from what I normally do on this channel. Now, about two, three weeks ago, we were in Discord chatting it up like we always do. Discord on and popping. I'm not lying when I say I'm in the Discord. So if you want to jump in and talk to me and other people, Link in the description. I know, I've been trying to tell them. I know, but we were all bored AF in the Discord and we were talking about something and one of the Discord members, Hannah, Hannah is an elementary school counselor and she tried to get her counseling, like her counseling itch because she's not in school obviously because of coronavirus. She tried to get that counseling, the need to counsel out through Discord. We started out with like a little grain of salt and then snowballed into everybody taking personality tests. And then I said, yo, that would make a dope video. Let's take this personality test on video. And then The Weeknd dropped his album. And then Dax hollered at me. And then the, then Joyner Lucas dropped Will. And then all these different reactions that had to come about before I could actually do it. But now we in quarantine. Now all of that has passed us. So let's go ahead and take this personality test together. Technically, I guess I'm a strong personality. Some people would come off. Some people would see it as, as arrogant. Some people would see it as I'm like so nonchalant because I'm an extremely fast learner. So a lot of things I get a lot faster than other people. So then I get bored during training and during class because I'm like, why don't y'all have this yet? And then I become the instigator and like the class clown and things like that. So some would say I have a hard personality to manage where I would say to that, that you just don't have a strong enough personality to be a manager. And that's that arrogance that people are talking. I, I get it now, you know, just talking out loud, I get what they're talking about. So let's just hop off into it, people. 16personalities.com. If y'all guys wanna take the test after this and like, let me know what personality type you are and whether we would clash or whether we get along, I think that's dope, but let's get it. 16personalities.com. It's so incredible to be finally understood. I feel like I definitely took this when I worked at USAA. I remember these little monito character things. That was super Mexican. Fast and easy. That's what she said. <laughs> It takes less than 12 minutes. Be yourself. That's all I know how to be. Now I'm same, same city, same friends if you're looking for me. Same city, same friends if you're looking. Complete it all. Do not try to leave any neutral answers. With a personality like this, it's either polar opposites. There's no one in the middle for me. You enjoy vibrant social events with lots of people. Do you agree or disagree? I'm already neutral. God damn. I like people, but I fucking hate people. You know what I'm saying? You know that feeling when you like, when you're in class and you get a test and you're like, hell yeah, I prepared like a motherfucker for this, prepared my whole life. And you open it, first question stumps you, I'm fucked, gotta regroup. That's me right now. I literally been preparing my whole life for this test. I should know who I am and I'm on question one. You know what, I'm gonna go like, I hate clubs and that's really the only scene that I don't like. I like going to music festivals. I've gone to EDC three, four times. I like San Antonio's Fiesta. I like going to the night parade. I like doing all that kind of shit. So I gotta say that I. I agree. So I'm going to agree. Fuck it. Let's go. You often spend time exploring unrealistic yet intriguing ideas. Bro, highly agree. That's not even a question in my mind. You know what me and my brother were talking about the other day? We were out on the golf course. We were, I was driving in the shit and I turned to him and I was like, bro, do you realize like we invented this game to keep our minds like busy. But every time that I stand and hit this ball, it literally means nothing. This, this day means nothing. And he's like, I swear to God, I was just thinking that five minutes ago. So yes, my brain does go to unrealistic yet intriguing ideas. Wanna know one of the intriguing ideas that I have? I was looking at like the chalkboard in front of me in class and I was like, I had an epiphany. Like, oh shit, that chalkboard right now is green. But really the chalkboard is not green because the way light interacts with different like surfaces, light reflects. And the color that we see is what's being reflected because all of the other colors in the UV spectrum are being, are being absorbed by the material. So that chalkboard is not green. That chalkboard is literally every other color but green. Because the only reason I see it as green is because that's the one that's being reflected. I blew my own mind with that. And this, like to this day, 13 years later, I think about it like once a week. But yes, obviously I explore unrealistic and intriguing ideas. Your travel plans are more likely to look like a rough list of ideas than a detailed itinerary. Duh, it's all just off the cuff, you know what I'm saying? Like who's got time? Who's got time to go and relax on vacation and then stick to a, stick to a schedule? 
Ain't nobody got time to be creating an itinerary and then getting upset when people aren't following that itinerary. You're not gonna get six people to fucking follow a schedule. And then the way my friends group works is that if I'm getting frustrated because of the schedule I made, they just talk shit and laugh at me. So I can't even, I can't even be frustrated at anything like that. So I just throw that concept out the window. You often think about what you should have said in conversation long after it's taken place. I mean, I don't do it that often because I'm normally on the right side of the conversation. You know what I'm saying? History is told by the victors and I'm on that side, generally speaking. I would say right here, green. Your boy is too quick off the cuff. Your boy has too quick of a wit in order to be bested in a conversation. If I had a dollar for every time I had to go, got your bitch ass, got him, I'd have enough wealth for generations to come. My children's children's children could live off of the burns that I've told people before in, in conversation. If your friend is sad about something, your first instinct is to support them emotionally, not try to solve their problem. I would say so, but also I try to solve the problem at the same time. We can't be we can't be drowning in our sorrows. No you no use in crying over spilled milk. Get mad that you spilled the milk, but bitch also go get the mop at the same time. You know what I'm saying? So I gotta go disagree. My first purple on this hoe. People can rarely upset you. Duh, agree. Who the hell upsets me? I rarely get upset to the point where it upsets people that I don't get upset. So that one's gonna be big green. Boom. You often rely on other people to be the ones to start conversation and keep it going. <sighs> I'm kind of an introvert. If we're talking about in person, am I the one to start conversation? I would have to disagree. So if we're going in person, we're going boom right here, mid purple. If you have to temporarily put your plans on hold, you make sure it's your top priority to get back on track as soon as possible. I'm honestly not sure, but I would say I would agree with that. It also depends on how, how important the plans were. If my plans were to go to like New York City for a week and then it got derailed because of coronavirus, obviously I'm gonna be much more inclined to get back on track with that shit. But if my plans were to just fucking go, go drink some beer with my friends, but then something better came up, I might not even tell them that I'm not showing up that's how often they do that to me so i don't give a shit about that but i'm gonna go ahead and go we're gonna go why does this feel like a life or death decision right here like if i pick the wrong one my entire test is gonna be thrown off we're going mid you rarely worry if you made a good impression on someone you met i mean you know me dog like at this point this personality right here after we get past the initial awkward stages of conversation i don't think i've ever left a bad impression and if i left a bad impression because my humor was too strong or because my personality like that's on you that ain't on me so i don't give a shit so i'm gonna go ahead and go with ugly it would be a challenge for you to spend the whole weekend all by yourself without feeling bored. Well, I'm gonna go hard disagree on that because we are 28 days in the coronavirus fucking lockdown and I'm doing just fine. Hit me with some Tiger King, hit me with some Parks and Rec, hit me with some Office, hit me with, some, hit me with something good on Netflix and psh, the weekend will just fly by. I won't even know, it'll be Monday, next thing I know. Sometimes you need a whole weekend. Sometimes you need a whole week to yourself just to recharge your own batteries because people are, people are exhausting. You are more detailed oriented than a big picture person. That's the same exact question as when you go on travel plans, do you get upset or do you do you make a detailed list or do you just go, you just wing it? I'm definitely a bigger picture person. You are very affectionate with people you care about. <laughs> Avi. And that affection comes in different ways depending on who I'm being affectionate and who I care about, who I'm talking to. If we're talking about a female presence, I'm out there buying flowers. I'm out there thinking about dope ass first date ideas. I'm just doing the whole damn thing. If it's my brother, I'm out there like being kind of like slightly crossing the border of brotherly love, like hugging him, meet him. How you doing, pop off, kiss on the forehead. He's 21 years old, like it's just a like a joke that we have with amongst each other. So I would say yes, I'm very affectionate with people I care about. Easy one. You have a careful and methodical approach to life. Nah, most definitely not. It's all off the cuff, baby. You are still bothered by the mistakes you made a long time ago. Ooh, we're getting into the deep ones now. Depends on what we're talking about. Are we talking about like mistakes that I made in relationships? Then hell yeah, I'm still bothered by the mistakes that I made because in my mind, I'll go through and fantasize about what would have been if those mistakes didn't happen. Or at the same time, if someone's been taking advantage of me for years, I go through and I'm like, yo, if I would have just been strong enough to cut that person off, how would my life have progressed from there? Not necessarily bothered, I guess, because it's like, yo, it is what it is. Again, can't cry over spilled milk. But sometimes I'll indulge in the thoughts of what would have happened or what could have been if I had not made those mistakes. So I would say I am over here on the green side. Not really bothered, but like also think about it, you know? At parties and similar events, you can mostly be found further away from the action. Your boy's a lonesome dove over here, you know what I'm saying? I'm one mad wolf pack. So hell yeah, I, I hate, I hate people. 
So why would I be in the mix, in the midst of all these random ass, you know, randos? Your boy Stranger Danger over here. So I'm going, I'm going, I'm going right here. Mid agree. Not, not too much because it depends on the situation. But in most situations, you're around people you don't know than you people you do. So I got to go with that. You often find it difficult to relate to people who let their emotions guide them. It depends. Again, everything depends. Life is not black and white. Like that's a black and white question. If they're being a bitch about something, then I'm like, yo, just, just nut up and like suck it up. Let's go, move forward. It is what it is. The best counseling advice I've ever seen or ever given sometimes is like from 2018 Twitter. It'd be like that sometimes. And it really do be like that sometimes. But sometimes you gotta let your emotions guide you, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you gotta, like this channel, this channel wouldn't exist if I didn't let my drunk emotions guide me into being like, yo, fuck all these reactors, you know? I can do this shit better than they can. That's what happens when you've gone off the margs, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes you gotta let your emotions, your, like your heart knows more than your mind, and sometimes your mind knows more than your heart. I relate, but also at the same time, I don't. But we're, we're trying to avoid this gray one right here. When looking for a movie to watch, you can spend ages browsing the catalog. It doesn't help that some of my favorite TV shows of all time, Seinfeld, Parks and Rec, Breaking Bad, The Office, Bob's Burgers, it doesn't help that all of these are on demand because eventually if I get tired of looking for a movie, I'm throwing on one of those five and I'm watching the entire series again for the fifth time. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, nah, I don't spend ages because I just get sucked into the same five things that I've been doing for the last five years. Boom. All right, next we got, you can stay calm under a lot of pressure. <laughs> Come on, boy. Cool as a cucumber over here, we already know. Highly agree. You can't be an athlete, even more so an above average pitcher in baseball, without being able to stay calm under pressure. The whole game doesn't move forward without you. All of the eyes are on you every single pitch that you throw. So yeah, I would say that I built up a little bit of a resistance to pressure. When in a group of people you do not know, you have no problem jumping right into their conversation. <laughs> Boy, I hide like a fucking cat. So we're gonna go hard disagree. I don't like none of you motherfuckers. Why am I gonna join y'all's conversation? Next, when you sleep, your dreams tend to be bizarre and fantastical. I would say nah, I would say I dream pretty realistic and pretty lucidly. I've been wanting to purchase a new firearm and I went to sleep with like with YouTube with like firearms channels in the background. Next thing you know, I'm dreaming that I'm at a shooting range and I'm like bargaining on a, on a new rifle. So nah, I don't dream very fantastical. In your opinion, it is sometimes okay to step on others to get ahead in life. Whew, you know, that's oof. I want to say that I'm a good person and I can't and I'm going to say I disagree that it's OK. You know what? I'm going to disagree that it's OK. That doesn't mean to say that it might not be a necessary evil. I'm going to disagree that it's not OK, but sometimes you do what you got to do. There ain't no fucking church in the wild. You know what I'm saying? Next, you are dedicated and focused on your goals, only rarely getting sidetracked. I would want to say like, yeah, I don't get sidetracked very often, but that isn't realistic. I feel like I get sidetracked, but at the same time, I feel like I get the goals done. Like there isn't one straight rigid path in order to find that goal. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go with nah. I am dedicated, but I'm not always focused. If you make a mistake, you tend to start doubting yourself, your abilities or your knowledge. <laughs> Hell nah. Next. When at a social event, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people and mostly talk to the ones you already know. Hell yeah. If I'm being introduced to somebody, it's because someone is introducing me. I'm not like, yo, oh, hey, what's up? Ernest, what's up? What's your name? Oh, cool. What do you do for a living? Nah. Hell nah. You usually lose interest in discussion when it gets philosophical. Hell nah, I, I dive in, I'm more interested when it gets philosophical. Your boy was in the ninth grade talking about how fucking the billboard is not green, it's every other color but green, and I'm out there on the driving range, I'm on the golf course with my brother talking about how none of this shit matters. Your boy's philosophical AF, you know what I'm saying? You would never let yourself cry in front of others. That never kind of makes a definitive statement, so that's automatically gonna be disagree, you know? And we're going, bam, right there. Nah, right there. Nah, yeah, right there. You feel more drawn to the places with a bustling and busy atmosphere than a more quiet and intimate ones. Again, it matters what we're talking about. If we're talking about a big music festival, the thing about music festivals and the thing about being around so many people is that when you're around so many people, it's like you're not around anybody. But when it's not 80,000 people, when it's not 20,000 people in an arena, I would say I prefer more quiet, intimate. Ah, uh, you know what, I'm lying, because I like bars a lot. That's basically all me, what me and my friends do. It's not quiet, I mean, it's also not bustling. It's just it's just a vibe, but I would go ahead and say more quiet and more intimate ones for sure So we're gonna go ahead and disagree on this hoe right there when it comes to making life-changing choices You mostly listen to your heart rather than your head listen to your heart 
I am logical with certain things, but I'm also like, I act with passion. I'm gonna listen to my heart right here and go boom right there, agree, you know what I'm saying? You cannot imagine yourself dedicating your life to the study of something that you cannot see, touch, or experience. So the only thing and the only topic that I can think of that fits into this conversation would be like the topic of religion and God. Like, and I don't see myself dedicating my life to that. I truly believe like that's a calling because you're giving up, you're sacrificing your entire life to go and throw yourself, not blindly into a faith, but to go and throw yourself into something that you have no idea whether it's true or not. And I wouldn't call myself necessarily religious. I do, I am a Catholic. I do follow Catholic rules and I do believe in God and I believe in, you know, Jesus dying for our sins and all of that, but I wouldn't dedicate my life to it per se. So I'm gonna go with disagree. Halfway through boys and girls, you usually prefer to get revenge rather than forgive. Ooh, you usually prefer to get revenge rather than forgive. I mean, Tupac did say it's the sweetest joy next to getting pussy, you know what I'm saying? Revenge is like the sweetest joy next to getting pussy. And then J. Cole said, fool me one time, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't put the blame on you. Fool me three times, fuck the peace sign. Load the chopper, let it rain on you. I believe in that too, but I also believe in forgiveness, but I also believe in growth at the same time. So I would probably say I'd rather forgive and not forget as opposed to get revenge. But next we got, you often make decisions on a whim. You're watching this video and 75,000 people have subscribed to this channel because of a decision that I made on a whim. So we're definitely going right there. Time you spend by yourself often ends up being more interesting and satisfying than time you spend with other people. That one could be neutral because I believe that I'm like entertaining to myself enough and I believe in recharging my batteries and it's like better for me to be alone sometimes. But at the same time, the circle of friends that I've, that I've grown with and the people that I grew up with, these motherfuckers are funny. That's why they're my friends. And that's why I developed this skin. And that's how I developed this wit. And that's how I developed these quick comebacks and ability to, and ability to argue is because of these dudes. So that one, I gotta go neutral because I'm trying to avoid the neutrals, but that one's neutral. You often put special effort into interpreting the real meaning or the message of a song or a movie. I shouldn't even have to explain how much I agree with this. The whole channel's premise is that I go way too deep into understanding meanings of songs and movies and direction and lyrics. That's the whole point of the fucking channel. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say I agree with that. Next, you always know exactly what you want. Lies. So I'm gonna go ahead and right there. If you always know exactly what you want, that means you're not expanding your horizons enough. How can you know that you want something that you've never tried before? And if you're someone that goes to a restaurant and orders the same exact thing every time, it's not that you know what you want, it's just that you're staying safe. Next, you rarely think back on choices you've made and wonder how things could have gone differently. Highly disagree with that. Obviously, I do that all the time. I just talked about that last, like a like couple questions ago. When in a public place, you usually stick to quieter and less crowded areas. I mean, it depends on what I'm in the public place for. If I'm in the public place to be around people, like if it's party time, then obviously I wanna be around people. So I'm gonna go with disagree. You tend to focus on present realities rather than future possibilities. Nah, I would say I tend to focus on future possibilities on my own timeline, but you can't get to those future possibilities without focusing and, and putting all your attention on the present realities, you know? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like both. So I'm gonna go here because I do agree that your time needs to be in the present, but that present affects whatever goals you're trying to get to in the future. So you often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. Disagree. When you start to work on a project, you prefer to make as many decisions upfront as possible. Nah, I feel like I like to like let the project unfold and let it unravel and be kind of and evolve into whatever it's, it's, it's gonna become its own thing. I'm just there to build it. It already knows what it wants to be, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and say disagree, but I do make decisions upfront to lay the foundation. Next, when you know someone thinks highly of you, you also wonder how long it'll be until they become disappointed in you. Boy, have a little bit more self-confidence than that. Highly disagree. You know who's like that? My fucking brother is like that. He hates when people hype him up because he's like, you hype me up to a level where I'm like never gonna be able to obtain. I'd rather you set the bar stupid low and then I blow your expectations out of the water. It's rule number one in business, under promise, over deliver. You feel comfortable just walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. I don't walk up to anybody. I don't, I don't talk to anybody outside the people that I've been talking to for the last 20 years. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, Hell no, nah, you're never catching me doing that. I'm not a fan of networking. I'm not a fan of making these shallow ass, like, oh, I touched this person. Maybe, maybe that relationship will come to fruition in a way that's gonna positively impact my life. Maybe that one connection 
will lead me into all this other shit. Hell nah, I don't believe that. I would rather have a deep connection with three people than a half-assed shallow connection, oh, here's my business card, and put it amongst the other 500 business cards that you have. Nah, give me these three people I'm tight with and leave those 300, leave them be. Next, you often drift away into daydreaming about various ideas or scenarios. I wouldn't say often, but I definitely do it. How the hell else would I have wound up knowing that the blackboard is something other than green? You look at yourself first and others come in second. Nah. I would probably say, I mean, again, it, everything is not black and white. In terms of knowing my ability compared to someone else, fuck that person, I put myself first. But in terms of doing a good deed or, or being there for someone that needs me, my ass is definitely coming in second. So I would probably say, nah. Even when you have planned a particular daily routine, you usually just end up doing what you feel like at any given moment. Why the hell would I have put effort and stress into planning a day and then I go ahead and just say, fuck it, I'm gonna do whatever I want. This is kind of similar to like when you go on vacation, do you plan shit out or do you just go on a whim? But not really, because on vacation, I'm there to just chill. I don't want to plan. And I'm normally with other people, so it's always gonna be a fluid, it's always gonna be a fluid experience. But if I'm by myself and I'm making a plan for my day, I'm sticking to that shit. So I'm gonna go disagree because I don't just do it unless something hella dope comes up like hey I was gonna I was planning on recording but do you want to go to fucking game seven of the of Spurs versus LA Lakers in the Western Conference Championship nah bro I set a fucking plan for the day that wasn't part of it I can't do that my ass is gonna be at that game paying overpriced beer paying overpriced popcorn your mood can change very quickly hell nah my mood's good all the time it's hard to get me upset I'm just too sarcastic to let your words affect me I would rather take your words put my sarcastic twist on them back at you and let them affect you before it ever affects me. So no, my mood does not change very quickly. Disagree. Next, you often contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. Pfft, I just said that a couple, couple questions ago. So yeah, I do contemplate that. And the reason for human existence and the meaning of life, there isn't fucking one. So live it up, do that thing that you wanna do, go get that tattoo that you want. I mean, I would say as long as it's not on your face because you know, you gotta go out and get a job and money runs the world. But if that's what you wanna do and you're cool with the decision that you're making and you're cool with all of the problems that you're gonna have with it, do what you gotta do, bro. You do you. At the end of the day, we're all just a blip in existence, not even just our life. The human race, when we go extinct, it's not like gonna be like we never existed. And that's one of the things that I don't understand. I mean, I get like, we gotta be better for the environment. We gotta stop using so many trees. We can't let these forest fires rage out. But to think that we're destroying the earth, that's a very egotistical thing to say. As if the earth isn't gonna fuck us up first, the earth is gonna correct course on its own. If we're burning the shit alive, it's gonna be like, oh, ice age, kill all those motherfuckers. Let's start anew. We really don't matter in the grand scheme of things, but I do get like, we need to leave the planet a better place for the next generation, yada, 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 yada. And that's all that I got to say about that. You often talk about your own feelings or emotions. Nah, I don't talk about them, I write about them. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I disagree. You have got detailed education or career development plans stretching several years into the future. I would not say detailed. First off, the education plans dropped out of college because I didn't see that far into the future and I hated paying for something that I wasn't finding passion in, so fucking got rid of that shit real quick. But career development plans, like the path that I'm on right now, I know takes time, like to be a licensed financial advisor with a Series 7, Series 66, federally licensed financial advisor for wealth management. I know that that takes time. It takes a couple of years, but I wouldn't say like, I know what I'm gonna be doing for like seven years into the future. That's too far off. I don't think that far out. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I disagree. Next, you rarely dwell on your regrets. <sighs> Let me tell you some of the wisest words that I've ever had the privilege of hearing from one of the greatest philosophers of our time. This right here is the number one rule for your set. In order to survive, you gotta learn to live with regrets. On the rise to the top, many drop. Don't forget, in order to survive, you gotta what? Learn to live with regrets. Some wise words from a great philosopher, Sean Carter, AKA Jay-Z. I mean, I dwell, so I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna get to go from here to here to here to here to here. Next, spending time in a dynamic atmosphere with lots of people around quickly makes you feel drained and in the need to get away. I mean, I'm kind of in the middle with all of these similar type questions, because again, it just depends on how long I'm in, that, in, I'm in that position for. It depends if I put myself in that position. It depends if the point of the position is that there's all these people around and we're all vibing to the same thing. Like there's a lot of factors in there that are not, that are not being discussed here. Would I say it quickly makes me feel drained? Nah, probably not. I'm gonna go right there. 
you see yourself as more of a realist than a visionary. You gotta bring these people back down to earth, you know what I'm saying? Don't fuck around and be a victim of your pride. Don't fuck around and be a victim of your pride. So I'm gonna say yes, I'm definitely more of a realist than a visionary. Bam. You find it easy to empathize with a person that's gone through something you never have. It's easy to show empathy, just put yourself in the position. You remove yourself from your life and put yourself in that person's shoes it should be fairly easy to show empathy. So for me, I find it easy to empathize with people, regardless if I've been in this situation or not. So obviously I'm gonna go agree. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than to organized and consistent efforts. Pfft, highly agree. Your boy is like fantastic elite level writer back when I was in school and that shit mattered. And if I had three months to write a 15 page paper, I would wait until the last day and a half. I do half a day of research, bang out 15 pages in the last second. And I have never, ever gotten anything less than an A on a paper, ever. So yeah, I would say I'm kind of very spontaneous bursts of energy. Aw oh, shit, we're on the last couple questions here. We're at 90%. Your emotions control you more than you control them disagree. I mean, not strongly disagree. Nah, like mid disagree. I would say that I'm pretty in control of my emotions unless I'm extremely passionate about something, especially after I see the fault in not having them in control. Like when I had first started this channel and I would see people that disagreed with the things that I was saying, or I would see people try to troll in the comments. I was putting all of my energy into trolling back as opposed to putting in my energy into the people that were that were subscribing, putting it into the energy and the people that were actually liking the content and I put out. And then after I realized like my emotions were controlling that situation, now pretty much all you see me is comment and talk to people that have good things to say about the channel. So I would definitely say that I'm in control of my emotions more so than I'm not. After a long and exhausting week of fun parties, just what you need. I, I do like to go to parties, but I also like to recharge. So I'd probably say like, boom, right here, especially if the party is with my friends. Like if we're the ones throwing the party, then yeah, I'm about it. But if you're asking me to go and enjoy a party that someone else is throwing, especially someone that I don't know, peace, catch me on the golf course. You frequently find yourself wondering how technological advancement could change everyday life. Nah, I'm not the person that's making those decisions about the technology. I'm not the person in research and development. Since I don't have a direct hand in it, I just let the technology comes as it comes, let the chips fall where they may, and then I use it as necessary. So I would go ahead and say, I disagree. You always consider how your actions might affect other people before doing something. I would say at this point, at 30 years old, I would highly agree with that at this point. I've made extremely bad decisions that did affect people extremely negatively, affected my course of my life negatively. And those are the regrets, like we're saying earlier, that I gotta live with. And those are the regrets, those are the things that I could have done differently. And I often look back to see how life would have progressed if had I not made those bad decisions. But now at 30 years old and know that I need to not be that immature person that doesn't think before saying or think before acting. I think about that kind of stuff now. So I would say I definitely consider how certain actions would affect people. Because at the end of the day, like I said, none of this matters. And the only thing that matters is the relationship that you have with people in your time here. So if you're just running over people's hearts, like that's not a good look. And that's something that I had to learn. Coming down to these last two questions, ladies and gentlemen, you still honor the commitments you have made even if you have a change of heart. Yes, I honor that shit. I'm a man of my word, you know what I'm saying? In life, all you have is your word and your balls and I don't break them for nothing nobody. And last question here, you rarely feel insecure. Depends what we're talking about. Physically, in the physical world, I do feel insecure about certain things. Sometimes if I'm around a lot taller people, I'm like, damn, this fucking 5'11 on Tinder, I'm six foot. This 5'11 body is not really stacking up with these with these 6'4 motherfuckers. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm confident in my personality. I'm confident in who I am to rarely feel insecure about someone's physical presence. That physical presence only goes so far. That's shallow, that surface level. After that, what do you have? And if you don't have shit, you're not gonna stack up against me because I got all all the fucking chips, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go ahead and say highly disagree, which also is why I'm seen as arrogant by my coworkers sometimes, which is also why I'm seen as kind of sarcastic because I don't feel insecure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for these results. Let's go ahead and see what personality type I got. Just a moment. Yo, you know what I hate? I hate when tests, when I took my, when I take my SIE for the first portion of like the series seven license, when I hit submit at the very end, this is a life changing test. I hit submit at the very end. It's calculating for like 10 seconds. My heart's fucking going. And then the next page is, are you sure you wanted to hit some? Bitch, yes, give my fucking answers. I need to know what's up. Hate that shit. My mind, what I got going on up here, 60% introverted. 
This trait determines how we interact with our environment. I would say that that's pretty accurate. The most interacting that I do with people outside of my friends group is y'all motherfuckers. Outside of that, I'm not just going and interacting with randos. Stranger danger, fam. Energy, the vibes. This trait shows how we direct our mental energy. Where are our vibes? I'm intuitive, fam. We just do things off the cuff. What we got going on up here, we're trusting that we're right. 52% intuitive, I feel like that's pretty accurate for me. Nature, this trait determines how we make decisions and cope with emotions. Are we a thinker or are we a feeler? <laughs> Boy, listen to your heart because I got 75%. You know, that's definitely I'm over here with my feels. I'm deep in my feels, which is probably why I like Drake a lot because that boy gets me. I Drake and drive all the time. You know what I'm saying? See, all y'all people that are over here in the thinking section, guaranteed y'all have paralysis of analysis. You overthink to the point where you where you make it more convoluted than it needs to be. Just go with your gut, fam. Tactics. This trait reflects our approach to work, planning, and decision making. Are we prospecting? Are we like seeing everything that's possible? Or are we making judgmental calls? I don't know what the fuck those two things mean when it comes to tactics, but I'm over here prospecting, you know what I'm saying? And apparently at like a high level, 63%. And lastly, identity. Who are we? This trait underpins all others, shows how confident we are in our abilities and our decisions. Your boy's assertive as fuck, you know what I'm saying? And what's the difference between assertive and turbulent? I'm assuming this little start reading arrow is gonna tell me because I don't even know what the fuck turbulent means and when it comes to identity. But just know that this is where I am right here. I'm a mediator. And you know how I know that I'm definitely a mediator? Because I've done this test, this same exact test. I remember taking it because I remember this screen. Same thing five years ago. All right, let's find out who a mediator is and let's see how well that stacks up to who I personally feel like I am in real life. Introduction. Mediator personalities are true idealists, always looking for the hint of good and even the worst of people and events, searching for ways to make things better. While they may be perceived as calm, reserved, or even shy, mediators have an internal flame and passion that can truly shine. Boy, if that ain't me, I don't know what is. I'm not putting all my time out there into people that don't deserve it, but when you do get that time from me, you see that passion, you see that flame, as y'all are seeing in this YouTube channel. Comprising of just 4% of the population? Boy, I'm out here a rarity, you know what I'm saying? A left-handed mediator? Left-handed's already 7%, and then 4% are mediators. I'm out here in like 0.01%. Comprising of just 4% of the population, the risk of feeling misunderstood is unfortunately high for the mediator mediator personality type. But when they find like-minded people to spend their time with, the harmony they will feel will be a fountain of joy and inspiration. That's where the frustration comes in when people tell me, bro, you're like, you're like too arrogant. You're too sarcastic. Like, nah, we just don't, the vibes just aren't there between us. And that's not my fault. It's not my fault that I'm a rarity, a left-handed mediator who is also an essential to the United States economic structure and I'm a foundation to the United States economy. I'm one in a million fam, you know what I'm saying? Shit. All right, let's look at these strengths and weaknesses right here. Let's go. Mediator strengths. Mediator's friends and loved ones will come to admire and depend on them for their optimism. Boy, this is me. People with the mediator personality type have no interest in having power over others and don't care much for domineering attitudes at all. Bro, that's probably why I, I conflict so much with a lot of people who are micromanagers. Let me do me, and if I do my work in the way that it needs to get done, why do I have to do all this other bullshit that you want me to do? I still ended up at the same place. They prefer a more democratic approach and work hard to ensure that every voice and perspective is heard. I definitely play devil's advocate all the fucking time. I'm the guy that likes to fucking stir the pot when everything's going right, just to make sure that all the, all the everything's ironed out, we're, we're good to go, you know? A live and let live attitude comes naturally to mediators it is what it is. You know, it'd be like that sometimes. Mediators give the benefit of the doubt too, so as long as their principles and ideas are not being challenged, challenge my shit, but I know that I'm right. That's fine if you wanna challenge, but just know that you're gonna end up losing. They'll support others' right to do what they think is right. I said that about the face tattoo, bro. Do what you gotta do, do what you think is right. It's not affecting my life in any way, so who am I to say? otherwise. Boom. Look at this one right fucking here. Very creative. I would say so myself. Mediators combine their visionary nature with their open-mindedness to allow them to see things from unconventional perspectives. Again, putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Being able to connect many far-flung dots into a single theme, it's no wonder why many mediators are celebrated poets and authors. I am a writer. I just said that. I've written poetry. There's a poem on this channel. There's actually one coming up in probably a week that I'm going to be doing. 
I just love getting my creative outlet because that like it le that's what resets my that that's what recharges my batteries. And a lot of times you can't be creative in a group setting because your creativity has to be diluted or you have to like limit it because y'all all have to achieve this one goal where your creativity might lend you and like send you out in the right field. You know what I'm saying? Passionate and energetic. When something captures mediators' imaginations and speaks to their beliefs, they go all in, dedicating their time, energy, thoughts, and emotions to a project. Yup, look at this channel. Dedicated and hardworking, while others focusing on the challenges of the moment may give up when the going gets tough, mediators, especially assertive ones, ya yeah boy, have the benefit of their far-reaching vision to help them get through. I would say that that's true too. Mediator weaknesses. Let's find out the things that I hate about myself. Difficult getting to know. Mediators are private, yes. Reserved and self-conscious, yes and yes. This makes them notoriously difficult to really get to know and their need for these qualities contributes to the guilt they often feel for not giving more of themselves to those that they care about. Yo, that shit's deep and that shit's true. Uh-oh, romantic relationships. Seeing as how I fucked some up in the past, I'm not looking forward to this one right here. Mediators are dreamy idealists and in the pursuit of the perfect relationship, this quality shows strongest. Mediators dream of the perfect relationship, forming an image of this pedestaled ideal that is their soulmate, playing and replaying scenarios in their head of how things will be. This is a role that no person can hope to fill and people with the mediator personality type need to recognize that nobody's perfect and that relationships don't just magically fall into place. They take compromise, understanding and effort. I mean, yeah, I guess so, but I also don't, I'm not sure about like if I'm that far off where I'm putting these people on a fucking pedestal. Love all, trust few, and do wrong to none. I don't even need to read the rest. That right there is me. You gotta earn trust. It's not just giving straight from the gate. I'm like a fucking cat. Mediators tend to focus their attention on just a few people in their lives, meaning that they will approach new relationships wholeheartedly with a sense of inherent value, dedication, and trust. True as fuck. But, oh man, already reading this first sentence right here, this one's gonna fuck me up because this is true. But mediators aren't necessarily in a rush to commit. They are, after all, prospecting types and are almost always looking to establish a new relationship or approve an existing one. They need to be sure they found someone compatible. In dating, mediators will often start with a flurry of comparisons, exploring all the ways in the current flame matches with the ideals they've imagined. This progression can be a challenge for a new partner as not everyone is able to keep up with mediators' rich imaginations or moral standards. If incompatibility is in conflict over the initial rush mount, the relationship can end quickly with mediators likely sign that it wasn't meant to be. Psh, bro, I'm a fucking idiot, is basically what that's saying. Mediators take the time to understand those who they truly care about, while at the same time helping them learn, grow, and change. While mediators are well-meaning, not everyone appreciates what, they, what can come across as constantly being told that they need to improve, or put another way, that they're not good enough. Yikes. Mediators would be aghast to find their intents were interpreted this way, but it's a real risk. And if their partner is so adverse to conflict as mediators themselves, it can boil under the surface for some time before surfacing too late to fix. God damn it. Gotta have better communication mediators, fuck. Better three hours too soon than a minute too late. This aversion to conflict while contributing greatly to stability in a relationship when done right is probably the most urgent quality for mediators to work on. Between their sensitivity and imagination, yes and yes, I got both of those, mediators are prone to internalizing even objective statements and facts, reading into them themes and exaggerated consequences, sometimes responding as though these comments and metaphors designed to threaten the very foundations of their principles. Naturally, this is almost certainly an overreaction and mediators should practice practice what they preach and focus on improving their ability to respond to criticism with calm objectivity rather than irrational accusations and weaponized guilt. Oh, boy, that sounds fire as fuck. Weaponized guilt? Whew. I guess mediators are semi-toxic, but not really because they're trying to do good. I don't know, but that's a fire ass way to put that weaponized guilt. I'm gonna have to use that in a poem, copy and paste. But all that shit, all that toxicity, that's at the uncommon worst, at their best. Mediators do everything they can to be the ideal partner, staying true to themselves and encouraging their partners to do the same. She said, poor enough so I could try some. I thought taking drugs just ain't you. Be you. Yeah, girl, just be you. People with this personality type are generous in their affection with a clear preference for putting their pleasure, the pleasure of their partners first. It is in knowing that their partners are satisfied that mediators truly feel the most pleasure. I'm selfless than a motherfucker out here, basically. Let's see what friendships got to offer. The true friends of people with a mediator personality tend to be few and far between, but those that make the cut are often friends for life. Boy, I can name them off right now. Jonathan, Patrick, Alfie, Fidel, who's my cousin. He don't really count, but he does. Giovanni, Eric Josh, 
Richard, off the top, off the dome, those are the only people that I can think of. And I've been friends with these mothers since I was like four. And that's the second fam. Those are the people that are not blood relatives that I feel are just as tight as my blood relatives. If not so, even more tight. I would call these eight people before I call some of my family members that I share the same blood with. That's the second fam. First fam, family. Second fam, friends that are, might as well be like family. Third fam, y'all. The challenge is the many dualities that this type harbors when it comes to being sociable, bro. I already, I already know where this is going. Mediators crave the depth of mutual human understanding, which is why these eight people are like my boys, but tire easily in social situations. They are excellent at reading into others' feelings and motivations, but are often unwilling to provide others the same insight into themselves. It's as though mediators like the idea of human contact, but not the reality of social contact. It's not as though it is that. To top it all off, the ideas like networking, bro, I just talked about networking and how I feel like it's so fucking shallow and I hate it. The ideas of networking and the friend of my friend is my friend hold little weight for mediators, bro. I don't do this whole friendship through association, you know what I'm talking about? Mediators will always need to disappear for a while, removing themselves from others so they can recenter on their own minds and feelings. I just talked about this the entire test. That's why there's no, that's why there's a gray area because I do like being around people, but also get the fuck away from me. In the workplace, mediators face the challenge of taking their work and their profession personally. To mediators, if it isn't worth doing, it isn't really worth doing. And this sense of moral purpose in their work colors everything from how they respond to authority to how they express it. Oh boy, that is accurate as fuck. I'm one of the top performers, not just in my branch. I'm not one of the top performers in the city, like in the region and all of Texas, but I don't do all the minuscule, tedious like work. Last quarter, I was like 160, 170% to goal, but I didn't do any of the shit that they wanted me to do to get there. And that became a problem because in my mind, this isn't worth doing if I'm able to get to these numbers and I'm able to get to these end results that you wanna see. And then that's where the then that's where the arrogance and all that comes in. So I can see how this is definitely accurate. Though the way the mediator personality type shows through depends on the position, there are a few basic truths about what mediators seek in the workplace. They value harmony, for sure. They need an emotional and moral connection to their work, for sure. I'm not doing shit just to do it. And loathe bureaucratic tedium, bruh. Fucking yes, yes. I fucking hate micromanagement. Mediators would rather know that their work will help deliver a service that they believe in than to know that the bottom line has been boosted by 3%. Fuck yes. I don't give a shit about your bottom line. Mediators creativity is invaluable in many areas, including their own personal growth. Yet mediators can easily be tripped up in areas where idealism and altruism are more of a liability than an asset. Whether it is finding or keeping a partner, God damn it. Making friends, reaching dazzling heights on the career ladder or planning for a future, mediators need to put in a conscious effort to develop their weaker traits and additional skills. So yo, I don't know if you know me well enough over this channel, or I don't know if you know me well enough in the discord or my personality type that comes through on the channel but this right here is my swag nah but really this right here is extremely accurate for what i know about myself all right my battery died it's the next day so i guess i just gotta record the outro right now thank you for everybody that's watching this portion of the video because that means you made it through like 46 minutes of me talking about my personality but i appreciate you watching it really means the world to me because i know that this video is not the normal type of video that i do on this channel especially the length but i definitely want to start branching out and doing different things and you know just making the channel kind of a variety of different things but the core being at reactions and music so this is the first branch out but like i always say at the end of all of my videos go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other, and I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.